Evening to all you good uh, looking folks. It's a uh, real privilege for me to speak on behalf of my son. He is a real trooper in a lot of ways. He uh, finished high school and then he just kind of moved into his room. And uh, which didn't make us really that happy. What we wanted was for him to be able to get out and enjoy community life with friends, different activities that occur in, in life. And uh, in December of 15, it started. And I'm gonna use a little word picture to describe uh, to give you a little glimpse of what it, I see it as, I want to use a, a boat, a lake. I want to you to imagine you're out there on the lake. You're wanting to get to shore to some destination, but you only have one oar, one pedal, and the guy at the pedal is tired. He's out of breath. He can't go any further at the end of his rope. Then, by the mercies of God, independent facilitation comes along as the lifeline throws it to you and begins to tug, begins to encourage my son and us saying it's possible you can achieve these goals that he has he doesn't have to just stay in that room and grow old folks it's hard for me to imagine without independent facilitation in his life but that's where we're heading right now and I'm sorry to see it go there it's not what we need. We need our government to understand we need the support of independent facilitation. The individual that works with my son is such a big help that three months into it, he bought his first bass guitar. He said, I want to learn music. He began in Leamington going to lessons and then it extended to Windsor to Long McQuaid mm -hmm. on Walker Road. And he's been there steady, faithful, but it would not have been possible without the help of the tugboat tugging us along. Timing is everything is what a person ahead of me said. Yes, it is everything. If you try and force a person like my son that is not ready to make a move, it won't work. He has to get there mentally. And that's a big job of the facilitator, to get the person mentally ready to move. Now, if we get that cut off, we're not gonna have it. Those people are not going to get there. We're losing it, you know, to what, a few dollars? It's sad to see that go. I want to quickly mention uh, um, Common Threads in Toronto. That too was a huge eye opener for me. Two things that stand out very, very much. One, is a young lady that her mother realized through the event that she had a dream and that she was excited to fulfill it. She was jumping around for joy, you know? And then what really hurt was a young man that I heard about that for three days was thrown into jail because he got out of his place 
and the cops didn't know what to do with him, where to leave him, so they left him in jail three days without his meds. That hurts. My son loves to joke. As the facilitator will know, he loves to twist things around, turn things around and say the opposite of what has been said. And uh, it brings a lot of laughter to our house a lot of times. You know, it, it's when the driest moment occurs, he pops up with something that just cracks everybody up. And I'm so glad for that. We are so privileged to raise him. And we're blessed to be here tonight. The second one, telling your story. And I'm hoping that the, the words that I've said will inspire people to move, not to quit. Because he needs it. There's a lot of people that need it. A lot of us are hanging by the threads on this independent facilitation because a lot of them wouldn't go anywhere. And just to leave you on a high note, my son bought the first guitar in February of 16. He just got his second one, and he is so proud of it. God bless you. Have a great night.